So in scenario two, my objective is to tamper with the data received from the CubeSat. This scenario builds on top of scenario one attack tree. Uh, from scenario one, we already know uh, the IP address of the assets, the service is running on the assets, the web application is running, and the username password of a user. Uh, so in this scenario, I don't need to perform any of the first three steps of recon, weaponization, and delivery. Uh, so overall, the objective in the scenario is to somehow get admin access to the database server, and then modify the data once I have that access. Uh, let's see how we go about doing that. From scenario one, as you may recall, we found this application called PHP MyAdmin, which was running on the server. Uh, this is a software which is used to manage uh, a database. Um, so my objective here is to somehow get access to this database because once I get access to this, I can, I'll can i have access to the full CubeSat ground, ground database. Uh, of course, the, the question here is, how do I get access to this? Uh, so if we go back to the tree, uh, we see that there are actually, uh, there are at least a couple of ways that I could, I could try to do that. Uh, one is I could search for any misconfigurations on the server um, so that I could somehow, uh, you know, get access to the credentials of the database. Uh, or I could uh, execute an exploit, which would uh, allow me to get some privileged access to the server. Uh, in this scenario, actually, I was able to achieve both. I'll show you the first one. So basically, after some exploration, I was I discovered that the PHP MyAdmin configuration file containing the database username and password was readable by any user. Uh, now, if you recall, we'd actually uh, uh, gone into this particular directory and found that uh, you know we could we identified the CubeSat user interface. Uh, similarly, after doing a little bit more exploration, I also found that this uh, also contains the config file for the PHP MyAdmin, and as you see, it is it is readable by everybody. So. If I just open this file, and if I scroll down, I see that it actually does contain the username and password for the for the user. So let me try and see if that works. And voila, I have access to the database. Now this is uh, this is a serious misconfiguration, uh, but because it looks like the stock installation of the software left these files readable by anybody. Now that I have full access to the ground database of the CubeSat, uh, I can see and edit all the databases and the tables in CubeSat. Uh, as you can see, I have keys to the kingdom here. Uh, so now I have to uh, find find a table and then and make changes. Uh, let's see if we can actually edit the uh, edit something in the flight database. Uh, maybe the temperature values here. Uh, simple way to do that would be to issue a query to retrieve all the values for the temperature. Um, yeah, we see that we get all these values here. Let's go to the end of the database. Uh, this is where the recent data is. So I cannot uh, randomly change these values here. Perhaps one thing that I could do is, uh, as you can see, all these are in the range of 13 to 20, 25. Uh, I could probably just randomly make them, make these temperatures oscillate between 100 and minus 50 uh, or 100 and minus 100 uh, just for fun. Uh, I could do this. So I made a lot of edits here. As you can see, this would really confuse the operators as they may assume that there's something terribly wrong with the CubeSat uh, and may take wrong actions that could further impact the mission. Now we could also go and check in the, uh, in the, in the CubeSat interface, the user interface to see if our, if our changes have taken, taken effect. So I go to telemetry parameter data I could look at if my changes, and you can see that the changes have taken effect now. You can see the values oscillating between uh, 100 and a minus 100, and it just keeps going doing that. Uh, this would be really confusing for the operator. So in this scenario, the vulnerabilities that made this hack successful were the fact that a powerful service such as PHP MyAdmin was left open to the internet, and misconfigurations during the installation of the software gave any user on the system the ability to read the credentials. You can imagine that even with even legitimate but curious users of the system can easily carry out the steps that I, shown, I showed here and could cause irre irreversible damage uh, to the system.